The EU is back again, that's the European Union, and this time it's TikTok that's in trouble. Hey, TikTok. Hi guys, welcome to the Tech Talk Show on Our Media. As always, with me, Wilbert, bringing you tech news from across the globe. So for our first story, MTN South Africa is switching to solar energy. Now, this is to help it, uh, the company reduce its reliance on uh, South Africa's energy grid or power grid and also help in the fight against you know, uh, carbon emissions and global warming. To reduce um, reliance on South Africa's strained power grid, MTN has undertaken a major solar energy uh, project at its Johannesburg headquarters with over 5,400 solar panels now active. MTN is now on track to make its head office 40% less dependent on the municipal grid by the end of February. The telecom provider's phased approach aims to inject a total of 1,800 kilowatts um, into the office's microgrid. This will significantly curb the impact of widespread power blackouts known as load shedding that has plagued South Africa in recent years. With battery storage facilities slated for completion by March, MTN is leading the charge to keep operations running amidst the country's energy crisis. This move aligns with MTN's commitment to get its base stations completely off the grid and invest over 84 million to mitigate blackouts. Last year, the load shedding cost their company about 38 million in losses. Ooh, that's, that's a lot of money. Um, now, MTN is turning to the sun to safeguard connectivity for millions of subscribers. So, I think this move by MTN should be adopted by many more um, agencies across Africa, especially in Nigeria, actually. The blackouts really cost a lot to um, businesses across Africa, especially in Ghana and Nigeria, like I've mentioned earlier. So, MTN should seek to replicate this in Nigeria as well and in Ghana. So, by becoming an independent power producer, that's an IPP, and also by deploying various renewable technologies, MTN seeks to bolster um, energy security while reducing environmental impact. So I, I believe um, many more corporations, like I said, should take this upon themselves to switch to completely or gradually to renewable energy. Stadiums, ministries, schools, you know, large corporations, across Africa should switch to renewable energy. Okay, so the EU is back again. That's the European Union. And this time it's TikTok that's in trouble. Hey, TikTok. <laughs> now here's why. The European Commission has opened formal proceedings to assess whether TikTok may have breached the Digital Services Act in areas linked to the protection of minors, advertising transparency, data access for researchers, as well as the risk management of the addictive design and harmful content available on their platforms. On the basis of the preliminary um, investigation conducted so far, including um, the analysis of the risk um, assessment report sent by TikTok in September 2023, um, as well as TikTok's replies to the Commission's formal request for information on illegal content, protection of minors, and data access, the Commission has decided to open formal proceedings against TikTok under the Digital Services Act. Now, here is what two individuals from the uh, European Commission had to say. So, Margaret Vestasia said, the safety and well-being of online users um, in Europe is crucial. TikTok needs to take a close look at the services that they offer and carefully consider the risks that they pose to their users, young as well as old. The Commission will now carry out in-depth investigation without prejudice to the outcome. Thierry Breton, Commissioner of the Internal Market, also had this to say. He said, the protection of minors is a top enforcement priority of the DSA, that the Digital Services Act. As a platform that reaches millions of children and teenagers, TikTok must fully comply with the DSA and have a particular role to play in the protection of minors online. We are launching this formal infringement proceeding today to protect the physical and emotional well-being of young Europeans. We must spare no effort to protect our children. This is what he has to say. So social media has many adverse effects on kids, especially children under the age of 13. I mean, uh, they are not well informed about privacy. They are not well informed about the adverse effects of social media. Some of them get so addicted to social media. And so because TikTok is one of the um, online platforms that has amassed you know, so many great users, especially children, 
the EU is trying to pin them down to do more to control the activities of kids online. The platforms themselves should also put in more effort to control how kids especially use their platforms. Now, I know TikTok and Instagram both have um, family control uh, measures available on their platform. So if you're a parent, you can actually link your accounts to your world's accounts and be able to see and monitor whatever they're doing. So if they're doing something that you feel, the kids may not understand, right? But then if, you, if, if, they are, if their behavior online is actually something that's gonna cause them damage, then the parents would be able to do something about it. But what if your ward has an account which you don't know about, right? What measures have been put in place by TikTok and by Instagram and other online platforms to actually ensure that kids are protected? So here are some adverse effects of social media on kids, right? It impedes their psychological development. That's excessive screen time hinders social and emotional development. It also causes cyberbullying, you know? Vulnerable, um, kids are vulnerable to harassment, bullying, and negative interactions from peers online. It also has privacy concerns. You know, kids have a limited understanding of online privacy, leading to oversharing of personal information. Some very unscrupulous men uh, pretend to be young uh, guys, you know, under the ages of 15, and so pair themselves with young children and actually molest them in the end. So, I mean, uh, a lot more should be done to check these privacy concerns. And lastly, kids are easily drawn to addictive behavior due to the reward system inherent on social media. You know social media, if you post more, you get more likes, right? And kids, you know, may tend to become very addicted to this. So kids may suffer stress when they lose followers or when their friends break their streak. Just imagine, you know, your kid is on Snapchat, has a, a streak of about 180 days, and all of a sudden their friend breaks it. It can actually cause them so much emotional damage. I've seen um, many videos online of kids crying and even, you know, breaking up their relationships, fighting with their friends, just because their streak on Snapchat was broken. So there are so many concerns, you know, for social media and the use of of social media especially by kids that a critical look needs to be taken at rice is not included in apple's official guidance for wet phones here's what i mean now when your phone falls into water the first thing you'll be told to do is to put it in a bag of rice but this is so wrong and apple has even included it in their official statement or official guidance for how to deal with a wet phone so contrary to popular advice apple like most uh, people in tech explicitly advise against putting your wet phone in a bag of rice. Do not put your iPhone in a bag of rice. Doing so could allow small particles of rice to damage your iPhone. Apple documented this um, and said, rice is not included in Apple's official guidance for a wet phone because it is not an effective method for drying out electric devices. Can you imagine? I have wasted so much time. There was one time my phone fell in the gutter and I put it in rice thinking that this would actually help. Did it really help? I mean, what's, what did I do wrong? While rice can absorb moisture, it is not particularly efficient at drawing out water from intricate components like those found in smartphones. Additionally, rice particles can get lodged in ports and other openings, potentially causing further damage. So now here's what to do. Unplug the cable from your iPhone or phone and unplug uh, the other end of the cable from the power adapter or accessory. Do not plug the cable again until your iPhone and the cable are completely dry. That's dry your phone. So step one, tap the iPhone gently against your hand with the connector facing downwards to remove the excess liquid. Leave your iPhone in a dry area with some airflow. Two, after at least 30 minutes, try charging uh, with a lightning or USB-C cable or connecting an accessory. If you see the alert again, there is a liquid in the connector or under the pins of your cable. Leave your iPhone in a dry area with some airflow for up to a day. You can try again to charge or connect an accessory throughout this period. It may take about 24 hours to fully dry up. If your phone has dried out but still isn't charging, unplug the cable from the adapter and unplug the adapter from the wall if possible and then connect again. So in these few steps, you can actually salvage or save your phone uh, from getting destroyed 
by water. But remember, do not put it in rice. It's ineffective. Great, so we've come to the end of another episode. As always with me, we'll bring you tech news from across the globe. If you enjoyed this episode, if you have any questions on technology, leave them in the comments. If you would want us to touch on a few things that are of interest to you, leave it in the comments. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the post notification button so that you get instantly updated whenever we make a new post. Peace.